In Form Z, you can add a variety of dimensions, leaders, and nodes to your 3D model. We'll examine linear dimensions first. Before we get started, it should be understood that dimensions are placed on a plane. The plane that is active when the dimension is created will determine its orientation. Move the cursor over the faces of your object and notice that the input plane is automatically adjusted to the face, which is the same mechanism when drawing shapes with the drawing tools. With the input plane located on the front face, click on the corner to start the dimension. Click the other corner point to end the dimension. Click a third time to place the dimension text. Notice that the dimension is placed on the active plane. When dimensions are first created, its controls are visible. However, we'll talk more about this later in this tutorial. An even faster way to add a dimension is to just click on a segment. For example, move the cursor to the front face so the input plane is located on this face. Then click on the vertical segment when it highlights red. Click a second time for the dimension text, and we're done. It should be noted that temporary guides are available to control the direction of dimensions. For example, create a linear dimension from the corner segment. Snap along the dashed red, green, or magenta guides to align the dimension with the current plane's x-axis, y-axis, or parallel to that segment. Another way to control the orientation is to lock the reference plane prior to placing the dimension. For example, let's say we want to place a dimension along the ridge of this roof. With the Linear Dimension tool selected, move the cursor over the front face of the wall, then hit the F5 key, or right-click the mouse and choose Lock Reference Plane. This will lock the reference plane along this face, which is the same technique used with the drawing tools. Click on the ridge segment and the dimension is parallel to the locked plane. When your dimension is complete, don't forget to unlock the reference plane by hitting the F5 key again or right-click the mouse and choose Lock Reference Plane. It is not necessary to click on the points of objects. A dimension can also be created from imaginary points anywhere on the reference plane. As soon as a dimension is created, its controls are visible in the modeling window. You can move the start point, the end point, and the dimension text arrow as desired. When you click another tool or start your next operation, the controls are no longer visible. To display the controls again, use the standard procedure used for any controlled object, which is to right-click on the dimension and choose the Show Controls item. Remember that the Pick tool or any other transformation tool must be active to get the correct context menu. The other method is to pick the dimension with the Pick tool, then click on the Show Controls button in the Tool Options palette. If the dimension was snapped to points or a segment of an object when it was created, then the dimension stays associated with the object points. For example, if we reshape the box, the dimension automatically updates. If we show controls and move one of the dimension points away from the object point, then that point is no longer associated with the object. So if we reshape the object, that point of the dimension does not automatically update. To reassociate a dimension to an object, simply snap the dimension point to the desired object point, and the dimension now updates when the changes are made to the object. Now let's look at the Angular Dimension tool. Angular dimensions are created by clicking three points. The first click is the center of the arc, the second click is the start point, and the third click is the end point of the angle. A fourth click is needed to place the dimension text. Before I click to position the text, I would like to mention that the arc can be reversed by tapping the Command Can Mac or the Control Can Windows. Let's place an angular dimension on our sloped box. With this tool active, move the mouse over the side face and hit the F5 key, or right-click the mouse and choose Lock Reference Plane to lock the plane. As you recall, this will designate the plane of our dimension. Note that if the input plane is not visible, then it might be locked. If so, hit the F5 key to unlock your previously locked plane. First, we click the corner point for the center of the angle. Second, click a point for the start. And third, click another point for the end. If the angle is on the wrong side as we rubber band the text, then tap the Command Can Mac or the Control Can Windows to reverse it. Now click to place the dimension text and the angular dimension is complete. Observe that if we move the segment, the angle updates because we associated it to points on the object. 
Another way to place an angular dimension is to just click on an arc segment and drag the dimension text to the desired location. And next, we'll look at the Radial Dimension tool. This tool creates a dimension that displays the radius or diameter of an arc or a circle. Just click on an arc and drag the text to the desired location. Or you can click on a circle. If you need to switch the value from a radial to a diameter value, choose the Diameter option in the Tool Options palette. Now let's look at the Leader Line tool. This tool lets you place a leader line with text in your model. With the Leader Line tool active, click one or more points anywhere in your scene. Double click to end the leader line and the leader line text dialog is invoked, which lets you type the desired text for the leader. Long text lines need to be broken by hitting the Return key. Click the OK button and the leader line is now complete. The leader line is placed on the input plane just like all the other dimension objects. For example, move the cursor to the front face of the box and observe the input plane visible on this face. Note that if the input plane is not visible, then it might be locked. If so, hit the F5 key to unlock the previously locked plane. Now click to start the leader line, and the leader line is placed on that plane. When I double click to finish, observe that the leader lines started from a face will automatically fill in the text with the respective area, if needed. If not, you can simply type in any text that you want. The same is true for leaders created from a segment in which the length is automatically filled in. And leaders from a point automatically give X, Y, and Z coordinates. The last tool we'll look at is the Note tool, which creates a simple block of text. With the Note tool active, click a point in the project and enter the desired text information, or paste text from another application. As with leader lines, long text lines need to be broken by hitting the Return key. Click the OK button and the text block will be displayed at the clicked point. It should be noted that, just like other dimension objects, the orientation is dependent on the active plane when the note is created. And now that we have the basics of how to create dimension objects, let's look at how we can change the parameters in the Tool Options palette. Select a note with the Pick tool, and in the Tool Options palette, click on the Parameters tab. Use the Tool Options palette to edit the text after a note is created. Select a linear dimension with the Pick tool, and in the Tool Options palette, click on the Parameters tab. The Alignment option lets you choose the desired alignment of the text, such as at Start, Center, or at the End. Additional text can be added in front and or behind your dimension value. The dimension value is designated with the Less Than and Greater Than symbol. For example, we can type, This wall is and then on the other side of the symbol we can put long and hit return. We can eliminate the dimension value by deleting the symbol. For example, we can delete the symbol and replace it with the word very. To change the style of a dimension, select Edit Styles. Notice that all the parameters are ghosted because the default style can't be changed. To make style changes, click the Add button to create a new style. You can change the name of your new custom style in the standard way by clicking on the style and typing your new name, such as My Custom Dimension Style. Then click below the new style name to accept what you just typed in. We'll briefly describe some of the dimension style parameters. The text size can be set to either screen size or world size. The default screen size option causes the text to appear the same size on the screen regardless of how far you zoom in or out. If you change this option to world size, then the text appears to change size on the screen because the height is set to an exact size in 3D space. The text font for your dimension style can be set to any font available in your operating system. The Orientation option determines how text is displayed on the screen. The Default option, which is the Aligned with Dimension option, displays the text in the plane of the dimension. If you change the option to be Horizontal on Screen, then the text is displayed flat on the screen regardless of your viewing angle. Other orientation options include Vertical on Screen, or horizontal and vertical on screen. 
The placement parameter lets you control the location of your dimension text. The text can be placed above, on, or below your dimension line. Use the Terminator option to set the type of symbol placed at the ends of dimensions. Choose either None, Slash, Filled Arrow, Open Arrow, Dot, etc. The Witness Line options let you control the size of the start and end witness lines on your dimension. The offset is the distance from the dimension point to the beginning of the extension line, and the extension is the distance from the dimension line to the end of the extension line. The measured quantities of a dimension that are displayed on the screen are rounded by the values in the Display Accuracy fields. If no rounding is desired, zero may be entered in either field. In this case, the dimension value will be displayed at the current system accuracy, which is shown in the Working Units tab of the Project Settings dialog. For example, if we set the display accuracy to 1 8 of an inch and move a segment on an object, you should observe that the dimension text is always rounded to the nearest increment of 1 8 inch. The last two options determine when dimensions are temporarily dropped from the current display based on your zoom and viewing angles. For example, with the hide dimension by screen size turned on, dimensions that become very small when zoomed out too far are hidden and become visible again as you zoom back in. With the hide dimension by view angle turned on, dimensions that become unreadable based on the view angle are hidden. As we change to more of a front view, the bottom dimension is now hidden. When we change to more of a top view, then the bottom dimension becomes visible again and the vertical dimension is now hidden. It should be noted that you can load dimension styles from other projects and you can also customize your dimension styles in the Project Settings dialog that is invoked from the File pull-down menu. Concluding, we hope you find the dimensioning features in Form Z to be a valuable tool in designing, visualizing, and presenting your 3D model. This concludes the Dimensions tutorial.